Good afternoon to you. Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Friday, August 10th, 2018. A note about yesterday. I forgot to mention that I was not going to be here yesterday. Um, I went to Charleston, South Carolina, and did an interview with WCIV for the Hurricane Special, which will air on August 30th. And it just slipped my mind to mention it on Wednesday. I didn't forget the appointment. (laughs) That definitely would have been bad. Uh, those are some great people down there, and I appreciate them inviting me. And um, so that's where I was yesterday. There was nothing wrong. I didn't drop off. I just I forgot. My apologies. But you know what? It's interesting. Yesterday there was nothing really going on to speak of, and today there is. So it's a good day to be back, so to speak. Um, that's a long trip, believe it or not, from Wilmington right here to Charleston. It doesn't look like it's that far. But there's something called Myrtle Beach in the way. And that's like a big sand trap, and which is funny because there's a lot of golfing in Myrtle Beach. But I digress. Uh, really nice, though, to visit with the folks at Channel 4 in Charleston. I appreciate it. So it's good to be back, and we can talk about what's happening out here. This area, not quite an invest yet. Um, in other words, it hasn't reached the level uh, that I know of, at least not yet, that it's termed an area of investigation. But it does have a 20% chance of development. This is what it looks like on the satellite picture from earlier this morning. But I want to show you this, the development cone, if you will, or the area. And, you know, it's yellow. I'll get rid of my orange. And yellow is good in the tropics. That always means a low chance of development. Uh, Yeah, right there. And then orange and red. Red's, you know, typically bad, especially if it's pointing at land, right, Uh, for a high chance of development. And so we'll look at this in more detail in just a moment. Um, Let's take a look at the broader picture, though, the animation here from our good friends at TropicalTidbits.com. And uh, let me change this to blue just to help my illustration skills a little better, hopefully. Notice very uh, interestingly the increase in convection all around the Atlantic Basin. We have an area here in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, below up here off the southeast coast, a little pop-up area here approaching the northern islands. This area, uh, which is not where the X is, the X is over here, uh, and this will be eventually approaching the windwards, uh, probably, with some showers and thunderstorms. We do have this area and then more coming off of Africa. So perhaps the cap, if you will, the ceiling, the roof, whatever, being lifted so that we have more upward motion. I mean, clearly, there's less sinking air because we've got all these areas out here of convection and convection is rising air by its very principle so that is an interesting change that we have not seen in some time Um, this area in the Gulf of Mexico I want to just kind of put your mind at ease as it's pretty close to home not only Texas and elsewhere but down here in Mexico along the Bay of Campeche and elsewhere Tampico and vicinity. Uh, What is this? Well, there's a tropical wave nestled in here somewhere, and you can see if you look closely, uh, and that's the beauty of these high-resolution satellite animations these days, there is some air going into this system, converging. You can see the air flowing in like that. Not a lot of turning. There's maybe just the slightest of cyclonic turning with this system, but that might be because of the shape of the coast, etc., uh, but, you know, some showers and thunderstorms, uh, plaguing, bothering the oil industry platforms that are out there, and there are a lot of them. Uh, but other than that, I don't see any reason why this will develop, you know, other than the fact that it's over very warm water. But if we look at the, you know, sort of the x-ray, if you will, that's not what this is, but it's kind of like, hey, I think I've got a broken bone. Can you take an x-ray of it? Well, that's what this shows us, even though it's not an x-ray. Uh, I actually do not know how they derive this picture, but this shows us the spin or the vorticity. So, you know, another way to look at this, you have the satellite picture, if I can get back to it, which will show us, oh, wow, something's trying to brew in the Gulf of Mexico. And then you look at this and you go, well, really, there's not that much there. And that's where it is right there. There's a little bit of spin or vorticity, but it's at the very low end of the scale and it's not very round in its appearance and so the prognosis here is you know 
it's not a broken bone, so to speak. You get it? So you, you look below the surface, so to speak, of what's happening. And in this case, this awesome product from the University of Wisconsin that shows us the vorticity or spin in the atmosphere. And I'm looking to see if it's round in its nature, in its appearance. It's kind of stretched out. Uh, and is it very concentrated, which would it be indicated by the higher values over here to the right. And so as such, let's look out here in the tropical Atlantic. You know, a lot of energy spread out over a big area. And so again, that's not bundling. There's nothing really trying to come together quickly. But again, the signs are there that things are slowly changing. So looking at the upper levels of the atmosphere, and that's what this shows us here. The blues are 100 to 250 millibars up, way on up there, uh, 250, to th 250 to 350 roughly. I mean, I know there's a one there. And then um, roughly about 18,000 feet uh, with the green. All right, so what are we looking at here? Well, here's the outline of the east coast of the U.S. Uh, Puerto Rico is right there as an example. These are the Lesser Antilles. And so the upper level winds generally light out here but a lot and this is a nice water vapor image still a lot of dry air you can see that with a dark color um, but farther to the west you do have this tropical upper tropospheric trough carved out and there are stronger and there's an upper level low there stronger upper level winds to the west if it ever even made it that far uh, over the next few days we'll just have to wait and see uh, so again things and i've said that too many times i gotta get a new word for again as i said things are changing but not rapidly, so there's not much to worry about uh, anywhere, though we do see the beginnings of what we think will be, or at least I do, a fairly busy latter part of August and through September, probably. Climatologically, that's what's supposed to happen. And we see this on Twitter, too, different folks, Dr. Michael Ventress, pointing out that uh, a fairly short-lived system in the main development region uh, being picked up by the different, this is the European here, and this is the GFS and its ensembles here, and you know it's starting to trigger it, so to speak. Uh, and you don't see it carried out, uh, as he mentions, you know, like this or whatever. Like you remember last year with Irma, it had a huge signature many, many days out, whereas this looks more short-lived due to the still fairly negative conditions that are out here. And I'm going to tell you something, it's not the sea surface temperatures anymore. Not going to go into that much today. We're going to cover that on Monday. That's the big day to examine those, but it's other factors, the sinking air, the dry air, etc. cetera. Uh, the water temperatures are sufficiently warm through almost the entire main development region now. Whether or not they're above or below the long-term average, to me, matters not. The heat content's there. Now we're seeing if the other factors uh, become more favorable. So this is what it looks like on the global forecast system, the GFS. And um, let me just back this up, make sure I only have it out to five days. All right, there we go. So as this loads up, let me just stop it, go back to the first frame, and show you what's what. What are we looking for, and what are we looking at? Is that grammatically correct? Right in here is the area of energy. All right, and you can see it's like stretched out and... Yeah, but there is definitely in the wind field uh, some cyclonic turning. You, oops, got the arrow back. And you can see that right in there. See those barbs? And it creates that cyclonic turning. We've got the monsoon trough sitting off here. And, you know, it's there. It's like a grapes on the grapevine, but they're not ripe yet. So if we put this into motion, watch what happens, right? We'll let this load and we'll speed it up just a little. So here it is. Little area of vorticity tries to take shape down there deep in the tropics. I'll highlight it with yellow. We'll just kind of trace it out here. Doesn't move very fast. That's the other sort of key here as well. It's not moving west at like 25 knots or anything. So maybe the trades are slowing down here, which is also an interesting sign. But you see, there it is right there. He's following along. It's just a little dot, all right? So not going to last very long. The, the prevailing conditions overall just not favorable and you can see there as we get out close to the five day time frame it ends here it's not that significant so interesting but I'm not too concerned about it um, and it, may, it might last until it gets to the islands bringing some gusty winds and showers but that's a week away 
at least. And as you can see, let's see if I can speed this up some more. Da, da, da. There we go. It really doesn't amount to much through there. See that? And also notice too at the beginning, nothing really coming out of the Gulf of Mexico with that uh, area of convection that I just showed you. And yeah, we're coming up fairly close to the anniversary, certainly of the inception, somebody banging on the door, of Harvey. Uh, anything in the Gulf's going to get people uh, concerned. And so just wanting to show you nothing in the model anyway. Doesn't mean it can't form, you know, it's not like impossible, but I don't see any, in, in any of the ensembles, etc., any problems coming out of the Gulf. That's just more of a localized feature. All right, in the Pacific, and this is also another clue for me, Christie, not really doing much, gonna fizzle out eventually, no threat to Hawaii. Last advisory written on John, Dunn, and if we go down and look at this, five days, oh, nothing else forecast to develop, not even a mention. Once the Eastern Pacific calms down, typically the Atlantic Basin will have an opportunity to perk up. So also another sign that things are starting to change. All right, so I'll, uh, I'll be around over the weekend and we'll talk about these different features, usually in the afternoon. Um, I was gonna look at the Euro on the other system, but it's still too early, all right? It's out there, we got it mentioned, etc. We'll track it over the weekend and see what's up. But again, I'm not too worried about it. You shouldn't be, but it'll be something to keep up with, you know? And uh, on Monday, we'll go over sea surface temperature anomalies, as usual, a look at the upper ocean heat content, and the latest subsurface data coming in regarding the El Nino phenomenon. And that's also really interesting because it's, you'll see, I'll leave it as a cliffhanger. Nevertheless, I'll be around tomorrow and Sunday with updates on our system out in the Atlantic. Thanks for tuning in. As always, I appreciate it. I'm Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. Talk to you again tomorrow.